Chair of the Board, Madam Vice Chancellor, graduates, and honored guests. It is my pleasure to deliver this citation for an honorary degree for an extraordinary Canadian and public servant, Bonnie Patterson. In four decades of service to Canada's universities, she has been a tireless advocate for students and the need for a strongly funded and accessible education system. In all of her leadership roles, she has drawn on her entrepreneurial spirit to drive change and advance the institutions she served. At Ryerson University, she was appointed the school's first woman dean of business, becoming the first woman dean of a business school in Canada. Subsequently, she served as the first female president and CEO of the Council of Ontario Universities. At Trent University, she was appointed the first woman president and was the only president to complete two full terms. Having achieved so much as a university leader, she was invited back by the Council of Ontario Universities to serve a second term as president. In between, she also served as chair of the board for the Association of Universities and Colleges Canada. While at Ryerson, Bonnie led the way by purchasing a downtown hotel and converting it into a living learning center for Ryerson students. At Trent, she introduced new professional programs in teacher education, nursing, and forensic science. Under her leadership, enrollment doubled. 11 Canada research chairs were created and over $70 million in new facilities were built to enhance the student experience. These legacy projects included the new Chemical Sciences Building, a new Aboriginal performance space, the Peter Zosky College, and the First People's House of Learning. She is a recipient of many prestigious awards and honorary degrees, and has been inducted into the Order of Canada, the Order of Ontario, and Canada's most powerful top 100 woman. This remarkable leader, who can probably hit a golf ball harder and throw a baseball farther than any woman or man gathered here today, has also advised prime ministers, premiers, ministers, business leaders, fellow university administrators, faculty, and students. As a strong advocate for social causes, she also continues to lend her time and share her professional expertise with numerous charitable, environmental, and educational groups. Her life and her profession has been dedicated to service in support of Canada's university sector. Ultimately, the beneficiaries of this service are students, faculty, and staff. Madam Vice Chancellor, in recognition of her leadership and service to Trent University, for the guidance she provided to Ontario's universities in challenging times, and for creating a strong university network with a shared vision, I request that you order that you confer the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, upon Bonnie Patterson. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Faculty Senate and the Board of Governors, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto pertaining. Dr. Patterson, welcome to the Carlton family. Thank you. Madam Vice-Chancellor, Chair of the Board, graduates, faculty, honoured guests at our platform party today. It really is a true honour and a privilege to be standing here today. 
It's also humbling to be given this recognition, knowing that while I'm being honored and getting the credit uh, the so generously and eloquently presented by my citator, I have not done it alone. Dawn, that did the citation, for example, was an important part of that success when we worked together, and I'm fortunate from that experience to call him a friend. Thank you, Dawn, for that kind introduction. I'm also touched to have with me several guests today. They're all amazing colleagues who supported me professionally and personally in my career. Sybil Nunn and Catherine Downey, without whom I would not have had the impact that I'm credited with over a decade in my life as a university president. Friends, Claire Morris and Paul Davidson, exceptional leaders in their own right in higher education. These are individuals and a number not here today that I share this honor with publicly and express my thanks to each of them. So why have I taken the time in my short address to begin my remarks in such a personal way, thanking others? The success of a leader is rarely because of a singular effort, but rather the efforts of many, of colleagues and peers, community members, family, friends, and staff that provide the daily energy, effort, expertise, and love that help you do in the hours you have to make a difference what seems impossible. That's not to say as a leader you won't pursue your own ideas and actions and be accountable for them. Of course you will. But it is important to note that as leaders we really do very little solely on our own. Life is made up of various team efforts and interdependencies. As graduates, you begin another major transition in your lives today, and it won't be your last, and you won't be alone. While there are a few initiatives you might pursue that are acts of one, in my experience, they are few. And it's important to remember that, and when the opportunity presents, thank those that work along with you in your success. And remember, there's no quota on thank yous. So that's my first message to you today as graduates. You are joining over 100,000 others from Carleton University who have achieved today's milestone with pride and purpose. Today also presents you with a new network to tap into and a new relationship with your university that's been your home away from home. While here, you've opened yourself to learning to testing yourself and being tested by others. You've met high standards and demanded of yourselves the ethical practices to qualify for this important award, whether at the undergraduate or graduate level. And I hope you're taking away from this experience the knowledge that your most important accountability is to yourself. You can't delegate your own ethical conduct to someone else. You start with a fully paid for and owned asset, your integrity, and no one can take it away. Only you can lose it, compromise it, or sell it. It's meant to be enduring, as protected and integral to life as are your brain and your heart. Working in the university sector has provided me a dynamic environment in which to learn something new every day and I've learned from my students every day. You too have learned to learn. And as the provost has said, and I will re reiterate, my appeal to you is to never stop learning. And remember that your ability to learn is a lifelong skill set you take with you. I've come to realize in my career, regardless of the type of title I've held, an important part of success is also anchored in relationship management. The relative emphasis and effort in those relationships has changed from job to job. One role might require more emphasis managing relationships, managing relationships up the line, in others managing across peers, and at times across continents. But what about relationships that transcend geographies, are facilitated by new technologies and or models of engagement. 
future innovative models around the world will have as their cornerstone collaboration, and in certain fields, massive collaboration. It's been said that co-creation and the interdependencies of people, organizations, and economies today set the stage for new models of work and working relationships that await you as graduates. Evidence suggests that intensified openness and collaboration represent a new way forward to compete and succeed as individuals and organizations. That requires fostering trust and authentic participation. Paying attention to relationships will help you prepare for this new and emerging world of work. Whether your, your roles beyond Carleton are focused inside an organization as a volunteer or more outward and worldly, in this new collaborative state, the tenets of success in your work and your working relationships are the same. Respect, integrity, and trust. You have the basics now from your experience here at Carleton to build relationships and to learn and apply the attributes of a new kind of leadership that embraces openness and collaboration with courage. And as you gain experience, you'll take informed risks while you apply your knowledge and judgment. When the challenge of landing the first job or promotion seems a bit overwhelming, I'd ask you to remember three things. First, demographics are on your side. Last Sunday, my brother-in-law's great aunt celebrated her 111th birthday. You can do the math. Should you be so fortunate as she is, that's a long career and a long life ahead. So it takes, if it takes a little longer to land the first paying role in this slow economy, be patient. As a university graduate, employment statistics are on your side. The second thing I'd ask you to remember, and this perhaps comes from my own personal background, curveballs are really important in life, not just baseball. And when they occur, it often opens opportunity, and your preparedness will help you be lucky. And third, reflect on what a lifelong friend said in a note to me very early in my career. And I quote her, the beauty is in the walking. We are betrayed by destinations. So to you graduates, I leave you with one request. Don't worry too much about the destination. Life and career are more about the journey. Miigwech, merci. Thank you, Carlton, for this honor.